Hey, everybody. On the show today, I'm welcoming back Nathan Hirsch. I originally interviewed Nathan back in October 2019 on episode 34, where I was interviewing him as the founder of FreeUp, a marketplace that helps connect businesses with pre-vetted freelancers. Since then, Nathan has sold FreeUp and has started his third company, Outsource School, and he's only 29 years old. Outsource School is a company that shows entrepreneurs how to hire and scale with virtual assistants. Now, if you've been following me for any length of time, and particularly on social media, you know that I totally believe that having a strong team is the only way to be able to scale your business and have the freedom that you seek to live the life of your dreams. Nathan and I dive into why he made the switch, why he sold pre-up, and how Outsource School can help you. My name is Emmy Kirshner. I'm a serial entrepreneur and investor. The one thing that I get asked all the time is, how do you achieve success in business and make an impact? In each episode of the Tribe of Leaders podcast, you'll hear from entrepreneurs and visionaries who share how their leadership has changed not only their lives, but the lives of everybody around them. Hey, could you do me a quick favor? Take a screenshot of this podcast episode right now and post it on your Instagram and tag me and anybody else who you think could benefit from it, especially if you've been finding value. I'm so grateful for you listening. Hey, everybody. I am so excited to be welcoming Nathan Hirsch back to the Tribe of Leaders podcast. Nathan is a serial entrepreneur who started in 2015 with $5,000 and started freeup.com and recently just sold the business earlier in 2019 and has started a new business called Outsource School. Nathan, I just... I'm so excited. I can hardly wait to hear about everything you've been up to. Welcome back. Yeah, thanks for having me. Great to be back. Yeah. Share with everybody a little bit about your journey and what it's looked like as you've run multiple businesses. Yeah. So growing up, my parents were both teachers and I always had a mentality that I would go to school, get a real job, work for 30, 40 years, retire. And that's what they did. They, they're now traveling the world and they were teachers. And growing up, they made me have summer winter jobs. I was working 40, 50 hours a week, Firestone, errands. And I learned so much about sales, about marketing, about working with other people and business in general. But I also learned how much I hated working for someone else. I hated having a boss. And that's when I kind of got a glimpse into what life was like after college. And when I got to college, I looked at college as a a ticking clock. I had four years to start my own business or I was going to go into the real world and, and never look back. So I started hustling and buying and selling people's textbooks, competing with my school bookstore. I eventually got a cease and desist letter from my college telling me to knock it off So because I was stealing too much. (laughs) of their bookstore's business. And and that was really my first glimpse into being an entrepreneur. And that was addicting. And I just had to figure out what to sell. And through a lot of trial and error, I came across the Amazon platform. Amazon was new. It was 2008, 2009. I I ended up growing a, a very large cash cow Amazon business. But with Amazon, like they own really your business. You don't have a brand. You don't have anything. And I was selling other people's products. So did that for years, scaled that business using virtual assistants because college kids were were not that reliable. And through using Upwork and Fiverr, I really just hated the process of posting a job, getting 100 applicants, interviewing them one by one. And I wanted something bigger. I wanted something better. And I kept looking and looking. And finally, I said, you know what? I will build it myself. So I launched the the concept of FreeUp, a platform that pre-vets VAs, that introduces them quickly, that has great support, that has a, a no turnover guarantee if someone quits. And we just took it to market with a really crummy software and people liked the idea. We were very humbled by the reaction. They, they liked it. They could email and Skype me and call me and eventually go through our portal and put in a request and get someone quickly that was pre-vetted that could get to work with protection. And we scaled that business very organically over the last four years, growing it from a $5,000 investment to a million to 5 million to 9 million to doing 12 million last year. Mm-hmm. And about halfway through last year, one of our clients, the the Hoth, reached out to us about acquiring us. And we did a lot of due diligence on them as they did on us. And we we really wanted to create a a win-win for everyone, taking care of our internal team, making sure no one would lose our jobs and making sure hundreds of thousands of dollars from the sale went to them. And 
by the end of the the lawyers and the back and forth, right. uh, it was tough to turn down a, a win win for everyone. So we accepted that help with a, a ninety day transition, and now we're we're on to outsource school and hopefully teaching people how we grew an eight figure business using just virtual assistants, which is incredible. So I'm really curious, was outsource school something that was in the back of your head? Did you have the idea before this wholesale process started or was it something that kind of evolved after that? So for the past four years, it's been free up 24 seven, haven't really thought about other businesses. I, I did have people reaching out to me randomly about, Hey, you should launch a course or, Hey, I'd love for you to actually walk me through how you hire someone and interview someone, onboard them and all that. And so the idea was there. It wasn't until after we sold it that a buddy of mine, Nate McAllister said, Hey, I know a lot about courses and affiliates and, and I'd love to partner with you guys and get it done. And we didn't think of the name of, of outsource school until earlier this year, 2020. So it definitely came together afterwards, although there were there were small seeds planted throughout the past four years. Which is incredible. So I love that, that you kind of just took something almost out of like the seeds and have now grown it into a fully functioning business. So I'm curious too, because I know with my clients, like hiring is one of the things they struggle with. They understand the value of, of you know, having help and having virtual assistants and in making the investment even sometimes before they really feel comfortable. What is it that can help them really start growing with how to hire the right people? Is that like, what's the secret sauce? Yeah. I mean, there, there's so many things that you can't control when you're hiring people, right? It could be personal issues, power outages, they could get a right. job offer from someone else. It took me years to realize, and I made years of hiring mistakes that cost me hundreds of thousands of dollars, but I had to focus on my systems, my processes right, right, right. And, and making them better. So I really tried to break it down in my head to the interviewing, the onboarding, the training, and the managing. And how do we make each one of those processes fast and efficient? And nothing is going to be just snap your fingers and it gets done, but relatively easy so I could put people through that process. And for years, as people went through the process, when someone was good and they got through it, we'd go back and we'd say, hey, what did they say during the interview process? What did they say during the onboarding? How do we find more people like that? And when someone got through and they had a bad attitude or they didn't work out, we'd go back and say, okay, what steps can we add into these places so we don't find more people like that? So it's all about perfecting your process. And we really feel like outsource school is kind of a, a head start. It's almost like a three, four year jump of, hey, you can spend the next four years figuring out your processes and do the trial and error that we did, or you can take what's worked for us and apply it to your own business. And I think that's what I'm most excited about. So I love it. I love it. Um, how do people know what are the right things to start getting off of their to-do list? That's the second question. My people are like, you know, all right, I'm going to hire somebody, but sometimes it's so much easier if I just do it myself. Yeah. I mean, that that's overall just, in my opinion, the wrong mentality. I mean, there's very few solo multi-million dollar entrepreneurs out there that, that usually doesn't happen. At some point you need to hire people and us as entrepreneurs, we're really good at adding stuff to our plate. We're not as good as subtracting and delegating from our plate. Right. So, <laughs> so what I recommend people do is create a list of everything you do on a day-to-day, week-to-week, month-to-month basis and prioritize it from easiest to hardest. Mm-hmm. I personally like to prioritize it by things I hate doing the most because I'm kind of at the point of my entrepreneurial journey that I don't want to do things that I don't like doing. But I would start off with easiest to hardest and Next, each task, say, hey, this takes me 10 hours a week. This takes me five hours a week. You can even put a dollar value next to it. This is a $5 an hour task. This is a $10 an hour task. And start chipping away at the easy things. And I mean, I try to get five hours of my week back, 10 hours of my week back. And I even have what I call the 90-day rule, which if you're listening, I I recommend you apply to your business that any day-to-day operation that you add to your plate you only do it for 90 days. For the first 30 days, you're figuring out what working, what doesn't work. You're throwing stuff against the wall. By month two, you have a pretty good idea of what doesn't work. You're fine tuning it. You're writing that SOP. Maybe you start interviewing someone. And then by that third month, you started to train someone to do it. By the end of the month, you're no longer doing it. And it could take 120. It could take 60 days. But for me, I found that 90 days is that really good time frame. And if you get in that mentality where you're only picking stuff up to turn it into a system and process and delegate it to someone else. That's when your business starts to grow. I love that. And so true because I've seen so many people say yes to far too many things 
and not get it done, but also not delegate it out. And they, and they have people who can support them. So I'm also curious, curious is the word of the week here. Uh, what is the biggest leadership lesson that you have learned as you've grown? This is really now your third business, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, leadership lesson. <laughs> so back when I was working for other people, which I didn't have a real job after college, but I worked for years at Firestone and I had a manager who was a good manager number wise, his store did really well, but he was always over the shoulder of people. He was stressing people out. He would talk down to people, would yell at people. So when I started to be an entrepreneur, that was the only management style that I really knew. So that's what I modeled after. And I had very high turnover. I had 50% turnover. And it wasn't until I hired my business partner, Connor, at the time he was my employee, I eventually made him a business partner that he's a lot more calm, cool, collective than I am. I'm a little bit more high energy, like up, down, <laughs> all over the place, if you can't tell. And he kind of had to like reel me in of, hey, you can't talk to people like that. Not everyone can handle that type of energy. I was a little bit more direct, a little bit more, um, I don't want to say aggressive, but lack of a better word, aggressive. And I had to tone that back. So for me, the biggest shift from my Amazon business to free up was that mentality of getting away from being like that manager. And then from free up, it was how to be calm, cool, and collective when things go bad. Because during the end of the Amazon business, we had a situation where we put all our eggs in one basket with a supplier and then that supplier dropped us and things were crazy and I probably didn't handle it the best as a young entrepreneur. So going into free up, we kind of took that experiences and now onto our third business, I'm a lot more calm, cool and collective when things are going bad. I mean, if you think of an entrepreneur, you have all these like highs and all these lows. Well, people are looking at you through the highs and the lows. And so when you get high, you don't want to act like you're on top of the world because no one can touch you. You're a little bit more like, okay, like we're going strong. Let's keep it going. Let's keep the momentum going. Right. And when things are going terrible, you don't want to be like, oh my God, we're going to lose everything. We're going to become homeless because people react to that. And instead you're like, okay, it's a problem. We have to solve it. Let's work together. Let's get there. So I think that's the biggest change in my personal leadership style. Instead of being like this, it's more like this going forward. Right. You're more of the even level headedness as opposed to being at opposite ends of the spectrum. Right. And how is that informing the decisions you're making now as you grow outsource school? Yeah. I mean, I, I think Connor and I have a great relationship. We've been working together for 10 years. So just being able to talk back and forth and and now we added a third person, Nate McAllister. So it, it's kind of like adding a new person in the mix and we have to learn him and, and he has to learn us, but we approach it much more from a problem solving standpoint, much more from a, Hey, we're on the same side. Let's work together. Because I feel like even if you've been working with a business partner for a few years, you're, you're not always on the same page. You're not a hundred percent sure that you want the right thing. But after going through an acquisition with Connor and, and I honored my words and he honored his words, we're, we're much more comfortable being up front and open proceeding forward. Like we're on the same page. And one of the best lessons that I think is there's no like going back and blaming someone like both of us, we state our opinions, we make a decision and Sometimes that decision works out, sometimes it doesn't, but it's not like, oh my God, like this is your fault. You brought this idea to the table. We're making it together. It's a collaboration and, and we're a team. Okay. So you're not only level-headed and confidence, you're being completely 100% accountable. Yeah, I think accountability is huge. And and listen, startups make mistakes, right? There, there's no startup out there that doesn't make mistakes. And it could be internal, it could be external, but you just own up to it and you make it right. I mean, the beginning of free up, if someone got a VA and they weren't happy, what can I do? Can I get you a refund? Can I get you a credit? Can I pick out your, your next VA for you? Like, I think there's a certain sense of accountability and responsibility that you have to take as a business owner that there's going to be mistakes that you make. There might be mistakes your team makes. There might be mistakes that your software just breaks randomly. And, yeah. and you really have to take responsibility for all of it and just make it right. Yeah. And being a user of FreeUp, I've had some incredible experiences. And the one time that I had something that was even a little bit off, your response and customer service was phenomenal. Thank um, you. Yeah, that's something I just value a lot. No matter what business I run going forward, customer right. service is is everything to me. I think that's part of what makes like the most successful businesses, though, is that you truly value the customer and you're customer focused. Yeah, I would agree. I mean, I couldn't compete with the Upworks and the Fivers of the world on software. I couldn't compete with them on marketing, but I could compete with them on customer service. So we wanted to focus on that. Yeah, I love it. So as somebody starting to scale their business and they've hired the first virtual assistant, how do they continue to grow their team virtually? Yeah. So 
So what I like to do is take certain tasks off my plate. For me personally, I like to take bookkeeping off my plate first. I'm not a good bookkeeper. Most entrepreneurs are not a good bookkeeper. It was my second hire in free up. It was my first hire in outsource school, getting bookkeeper off my plate. I actually hired my first VA for outsource school, not bookkeeper, but a virtual assistant for me personally uh, this morning. And I hired them from free up, which is a little bit weird, but that's usually the... <laughs> The next hire for me is that virtual assistant who can manage my inbox, get me out of my inbox, keep me organized with podcasts, with my schedule. I'll probably give them extra tasks like lead generation. And yeah, to me, that's kind of the first two hires. And then from there, it really depends on your business. Maybe you need a customer service rep. Maybe you need a social media person. And as you grow, you don't want to get to a point where you have 10 virtual assistants and they're all just communicating to you and you're managing them. You want to assign team leaders and assistant team leaders. And You also don't want to just wake up one day and say, hey, you're the team leader. You want to give people more responsibility over time and and give them a chance to stand out. Give them ownership of a task. Let them own a task and see who who really crushes it. That way, when you do need a team leader or an assistant team leader, you know who can own it and eventually own a team. So that's kind of my overall strategy is figuring out, okay, what are the basics I need to hire first? Get them off the plate right away. Okay, Mm -hmm. what comes next? And then as you get bigger, giving people ownership, see who stands out and eventually assign team leaders and assistant team leaders. Okay. I love it because that's exactly what I think where you said you can't have 20 people you know, reporting directly to you. And I don't think people think about that team leader level where there's some distance between you and some of the lower level, just from an organizational structure right. um, assistance. So that's incredible. So what's next? <laughs> Uh, We have our software coming out. So that's coming out in the next two weeks. We have our new course, uh, the podcast outreach formula, which I'm excited about. Um, Also, partnerships has been a big part of growing free up. We partner with probably over 100 people in the industry and we have a system and process for that. So we don't have a name for it yet, but that's something else that we're building so that other people can take that and apply it to their business. So we're really going to take everything that we learned that revolves around virtual assistants and put it together in outsource school and hopefully a, a way that people can consume easily and apply to their business, whether it's a software, a course, a training. I don't know. I'm curious to see how it all comes together and plays out. Yeah, absolutely. I'm really excited for you. Um, I'm going to put you on the spot. So <laughs> uh, hopefully you'll play with me. <laughs> I am curious, what is your favorite quote? So the quote that I've lived with my entire life, and it's kind of funny, I'm wearing a hustle shirt right now, but work hard, play hard. My mom's been saying that to me since I was, I don't even know how young. And to me, and the way that I've interpreted it is just go hard at everything. If I'm if I'm playing sports, I'm going all out. If I'm at the gym, I'm crushing it there for an hour and burning a thousand calories. If I'm working on the course and then coming on this podcast, I'm giving it everything I have. If I'm with my friends and my family, I'm 100% focused on them. And to me, it's a fun way for for me personally to live life. I don't know if that applies to every single person out there, but that's a quote that that I'm always thinking in my head. Oh, I think that's a great one because most times entrepreneurs aren't playing enough, whether they're playing, you know, full out or, you know, even just making a little bit of time. We've got the business in our head 24 seven. Right. And what's the point of being an entrepreneur if you can't enjoy life? Absolutely. Absolutely. This has been amazing. And I want to know um, if somebody wanted to, to learn more about Outsource School, what's the best way for them to do that? Yeah. So you'll have a link for them. We have a VA calculator. You can also go right to the site and get it. Um, but check out Outsource School. Join our newsletter. We post a lot of tips and updates on, on how to okay. use virtual assistants. Feel free to connect with me on social media. I'm one of the easiest entrepreneurs to, to contact. <laughs> uh, Nathan Hirsch, Facebook and LinkedIn, the real Nate Hirsch on Instagram and Twitter. And if I can help you or you have any questions for me, feel free to reach out. That's awesome. And yes, you are on social media everywhere. I see you all the time. Appreciate it. (laughs) We're in a couple of the same Facebook groups. So it's it's fun to see you have great questions. (laughs) Thank you so much. And to everybody listening, we will see you next time. As an entrepreneur, do you ever feel isolated, like you're just grinding away and not getting to the place or reaching the goals that you want? Maybe you've realized that you just spent days, weeks, or even months trying to accomplish something only to figure out that the answer that you have would have saved you all of that time. 
I know I've had that experience and my clients have as well. And that's why I created the Tribe of Leaders Biz School. Get the accountability, the training, and the knowledge base in a community of like-minded people who are there to support you. Go ahead and check it out. It's thetribeofleaders.com.